Hey YouTube, I'm here with two really cool 4G devices for T-Mobile, the Galaxy S2 and the HTC Sensation. Let's compare them, shall we? Now from a hardware perspective, both phones are beautiful. The Sensation is a little easier to wield. It's a smaller 4.3 inch screen, smaller profile. I like the fact that it's not shiny, so it's not a fingerprint magnet, and it has a notification light. Um, this does not have that, which is kind of stupid because the Sprint version does have it. The Galaxy S2 uh, isn't shiny, but around here it is, and I don't like the chrome bezel because of the fingerprints and the uh, ability to get scratched easily, because I hate when my device gets scratched, period. It always bothers me, because even if no one else can notice it, I do. Sensation all around well-built device feels good in the hand not too heavy not too light uh, Galaxy S2 may be a little too big for some people especially if you have small hands but hey this is a 4.3 inch screen like this might be too big for some people and I don't want to hear any jokes about size if you ever had anything this big in your hand you wouldn't joke about it as far as screen technology uh, the uh, HTC Sensation uses a QHD LCD screen which uh, is sharper than uh, the Galaxy S2, but uh, the things look better on the Galaxy S2 because it has this uh, Super AMOLED Plus and, and it has this these excellent contrasts. The blacks are really black and uh, things just seem to pop. Uh, plus, like uh, when turning to the side, you can see that uh, uh, the Galaxy S2 has better viewing angles, which could be good, could be bad, depending on where you like to watch your porn. If you're a public porn watcher, other people are going to be able to see what you're looking at and they're going to call you a pervert. One thing you can't see, or maybe you can on camera, the whites on here have like a bluish tint, which is really noticeable when you're holding it next to a true white. But uh, when you're just using the phone by itself, it's not noticeable. So both screens are good. The sensation has sharper images. But I prefer uh, the Galaxy S2 just because things just look amazing on them. But, um... I can totally understand why someone would say that the sensation screen is better than the uh, Galaxy S2. Now as far as the version of Android you're getting with these phones, both come with uh, gingerbread. Uh, the Galaxy S2 has a later version 2.3.5 as opposed to the sensation that has 2.3.4. Really not a big freaking deal. One thing I've noticed even though this has the later uh, uh, version of uh, Android, uh, the video chat for Google Talk does not work on this. Now, as far as wireless technologies, uh, they have all the basics, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, 4G. This is supposed to have um, faster 4G, um, but uh, they have two differences. The Galaxy S2 comes with uh, NFC chip, and it's built into the battery. Now, even though the battery is large, I believe it's uh, 1850 milliamp hour, as opposed to the 1520, uh, it's harder to find an extended battery for it because of that damn NFC chip. Now, I bought a battery on Amazon, and it was supposed to be 1,900 milliamp hours, which is just a little bump. It was for a different Galaxy S2. It was for the, the global unlocked one. And it's annoying trying to find accessories for this because I, I even bought a case for it uh, online, and it said Galaxy S2 T-Mobile, but they sent me the global unlocked one, which was super annoying. But that's beside the point. The NFC, I have yet to use it. Like, I think it's really cool. And I think the Nexus S, what they're doing uh, on Sprint, like the, the whole uh, NFC payments, I want to be able to do that. And hopefully they will be able to do that down the line. But as of right now, I can't do that. Now, the HTC Sensation doesn't have an NFC chip, but it does have an FM radio, which is more useful than an NFC chip right now because I use that while I'm at the gym to listen to whatever's on TV. And it's another way to listen to music without uh, chewing up your uh, data plan. So the NFC chip probably future-proofed the Galaxy S2. I mean, hopefully down the line we'll be able to use that. Uh, right now, not very useful. FM radio, more useful. Plus, buying accessories for the HTC Sensation is a lot easier because there aren't a bunch of uh, variations of the phone. Now, as far as uh, user interface, uh, this comes with... Uh, TouchWiz 4.0 and this comes with uh, Sense 3.0. Now Sense adds a lot of functionality to the lock screen. 
you can put in weather, you can put in stocks, you can put in uh, friends uh, updates, and you also have access to your four most used uh, applications. Uh, right now it's telling me to put in a SIM card, but I don't have another one. What sense you get like a bunch of uh, cool uh, widgets and they make it easier to set up uh, than standard Android. So in, this phone might be good for someone who's uh, just switching um, to an Android phone. You get a lot more widgets on here and you get some really, really cool widgets. That being said, uh, TouchWiz is no slouch. The unlock screen is uh, really not that customizable. When you're listening to music, you get like a music bar on the top, but that's pretty much it. You can uh, also uh, make this picture different than your uh, wallpaper picture. They throw in a couple of apps at you. They have this really uh, cool built-in uh, task manager, which they also have on um, Sense, but it's a little more difficult to get to. Um, this one, all you have to do is hit home, hold on to it, and task manager. This one, you pull down, scroll over here, then you got to hit that. So it's three steps as opposed to two. Plus, the built-in task manager on the uh, Galaxy S2 is better. You click one time, you get rid of everything. Oh, and, and another thing, it has more uh, RAM. This one, you, you can click kill all, and then they'll still come back. Watch. And you, Well, they didn't do it that time. But you'll sometimes you'll have to click kill, 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 over and over and over again. Another thing to keep in mind, this has 16 gigs of built-in storage and the ability to expand using a micro SD card. This has about one gig of built-in storage available and you can still expand. Now both of the phones come with bloatware, but I prefer the bloatware on the Galaxy S2. Not only because they give you full bloatware as opposed to the sensation which gave me a freaking um, demo to a game called Nova. But if you have any applications on the Galaxy S2 that you do not want and you can't get rid of, you can categorize them as junk. Just throw them in one folder and you never have to look at them unless you open that folder. And it also works for uh, other things like I wanted to round up all of my emulators and put them in one folder so that's what I did right there. Okay both devices come with uh, built-in voice recognition that's standard Android but the native keyboards are different and I've noticed that the Galaxy S2 uh, voice recognition is a lot more accurate than the HTC sensation. I'll give you an example. I've never killed a hooker but hey there's a first time for everything. Well, I actually got it spot on, but it's usually not that accurate. That little street walker was hurting for a squirting. Who knew it would be blood? Well, I guess both of them got it right this time. But day-to-day uh, -day use, I've learned that this isn't always so accurate. Another thing I feel the need to mention, the, the Galaxy S2 does come with a bigger battery. Uh, 1850 milliamp hours as opposed to 1520 but uh, and both batteries will get you through the day but uh, in my usage I've, I've noticed that uh, the sensation seems to get a little bit better battery this video is being taken using the Galaxy S2 and this is the sensation that I'm capturing this portion of the video with the Galaxy S has a single flash the sensation has a dual flash So YouTube, in summation, these are both really great devices. HTC packs a lot into uh, the sensation with the FM radio. Uh, Sense 3.0 has a lot of functionality. Uh, I love Sense. There are a few problems that I have with it. Like and such as occasionally while I'm in an app, I'll click home and then it'll be it'll take like 30 seconds to load up home. Because this has less RAM and when it runs out of RAM, it closes the home screen and there's a lot going on on the home screen, so for it to reload uh, takes a while. That being said, I think for most people, this should be the choice. It's simple to use. There's a lot of functionality. It's not too huge. I think most people will prefer the sensation. My personal choice is going to be the Galaxy S2. 
the NFC, they're not using it. Um, future versions of Android are supposed to uh, take advantage of this, and both phones are confirmed to get uh, ice cream sandwich. But the thing that really makes me want it is the fact that it's so speedy. It does like this is like Android on uh, um, training wheels. Like this is for people who really don't know it. I I have a better understanding of it. So like some of the functionality that is on that phone, I can uh, easily. Uh, add to this phone. I love the screen, the Super AMOLED Plus. I I like that it's huge. I just tend to like Samsung devices in general, but I really love the Galaxy S2. But the best way to figure out which one is for you is to get it home and play with it. Get it home. Don't steal it. Go to the store and play with it. That's the best way to do it. Don't be a thief. Stealing is wrong.